Police body cameras captured the moments after caller Chasey Pointer dialed 911. What's going on? My husband, he went to go help me. My Jeep is stuck in the car. Around the corner, and he's been shot in the head. Please <laughs> tell us what 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 happened. I heard a shot, and the jeep started rolling, and I didn't see anything. And I saw, What's I, his name? Robert. 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 Pointer. This is Chasey Pointer. In 2016, she was 29 years old. She had been married for seven years to Bob Pointer, who was 18 years older than her. On September 9th, she met Bob on a dirt road, alone and in the dark. Only one of them survived the encounter. But who was to blame for Bob's tragic death? Chasey claimed that her husband died as a result of an accident. I heard a shot, and the jeep started rolling, and I didn't see anything. And I saw... But the police were suspicious. Was she really just an innocent bystander to a horrible crime? A wife traumatized by her husband's murder? This is the chilling case of Chasey and Bob Pointer. Robert Pointer, known as Bob, was a firefighter. Despite his tall stature and imposing appearance, the 47-year-old man was cheerful and unconflicted. He worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, rising to the rank of captain. He was involved in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, which hit the city in 2005. He has two children from his first marriage. His first marriage to high school sweetheart Amy lasted 19 years but began to crumble when Bob met Chasey Tyler Mormon. Chasey was born and raised in Texas. She worked in a dental office as a surgical calm down. But her passion was baking. Chasey owned a pastry shop called Fabulously Frosted. She met Bob, whom she married through a mutual friend, and despite their 18-year age difference, they hit it off immediately. He started paying attention to her 20-year-old friend, but that didn't stop them from staying married. Bob's daughter discovered he had a second cell phone. Chasey claims that at the time, she didn't know Amy and Bob were still together. However, one of Bob's firefighter friends claimed that Amy was stalking him. They bonded in December 2007, when 40-year-old Bob divorced Amy and married 22-year-old Chasey. Two years later, they had a daughter, Addison, and moved to Chasey's hometown of Roy City. Bob worked in nearby University Park, a quiet and affluent neighborhood. However, it was near her home that his marriage to Chasey took a dark turn. Late one night on September 9, 2016, after seven years of marriage, 29-year-old Chasey drove her car down a country road. Bob met her there. The next moment, the couple heard a distress call. She's pinging on Kenner at 2595, and she's extremely out of breath. She sounds like she's running. She seemed to be running. Only the frantic breathing of the caller could be heard. The operators had no idea what was going on. All they could do was send rescuers to the scene and wait. They didn't even know what location they were in. It was a remote, dark country road with tractor ruts and the remains of a fire. It seemed strange that anyone could drive on these roads unless they were farmers. The rescuers didn't see anyone at first. What's going on? My husband, he went to go help me. My Jeep is stuck in the back around the corner, and he's been shot in the head, please. She was hyperventilating and seemed out of control. An ambulance arrived on the scene, and the paramedics administered oxygen to her. They also noticed blood spatter on the clothing covering her shoulders and legs. Tell us what, what, what happened. I heard a shot, and the jeep started rolling, and I didn't see anything, and I saw, I saw a shadow, that's all I saw. Further down the road, which was pitch black at night, investigators found Chasey's jeep. There was the silhouette of a man already dead. It was Chasey's husband, Bob Pointer. The 47-year-old firefighter had been killed by a gunshot to the head, but there was no sign of a struggle. It all matched what the young mother told the panicked paramedics, a random intruder had come out of the darkness and shot her husband. In the ambulance, however, Chasey elaborated on her relationship with the police officers. I was going to meet him up at the jack of the box. I don't, I don't ever take this road. Chasey told the police officers that her marriage to Bob had been going bad for a long time. Her husband had just been murdered, so why was she focusing on marital harmony? J.C. revealed that she and Bob had arranged to meet at a jack-in-the-box fast food restaurant to discuss their troubled marriage. On the way in the car, she texted him that she was three miles away from the meeting place. 
While she was texting, her Jeep got stuck in the mud on a country road. The policeman asked Chasey why she had taken that particular road. This road was built for farmers to get to their fields and was poorly lit for night driving. She replied that she took a wrong turn. I was going to meet him up at the Jack of the Box. I don't, I don't ever take this road. All right. I, what made you come down this one? I, I missed my last one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. So I, I did it. I've never, never been down this road before. A young woman stuck on an unpopular country road asked her husband Bob for help. He didn't hesitate. Being a firefighter, he was used to rushing to the rescue. Bob got into his truck and drove to the spot Chasey had indicated. However, the road was rough and the ruts were deep and he couldn't reach her Jeep. Bob got out of his truck and walked to his wife's Jeep. Chasey waited on the curb while Bob got into the Jeep and tried to back up. That's when she heard gunshots. She jumped into the Jeep. Bob, who had been wounded, was no longer able to drive and was slowly rolling down the road. Chasey held Bob's head, telling the police officers that his head was covered in blood. She put the car in park and started calling his name, but Bob was already dead. Bob was shot in the right temple. It is unknown if he was shot from the front or back of the car. The assailant left no evidence. In the absence of physical evidence, police had to rely on Chasey's story. She said she saw a man at the scene. There was a man. I, there was a tall person. Uh, that's all I know. Okay. He was taller than me. And what was he wearing? Uh, dark clothes is all I know. Dark. Did you see any type of firearm, rifle, or anything no. like that in his hands? I, no. Chasey telling the truth, or did she know more than she was saying? I was young and stupid when we got married. I didn't want to be married anymore. What do y'all fight over? My daughter. He's trying to take my daughter away from me. Why would he try to take your daughter away? Like, what reason did because he give you? Because he knows that that's what's going to hurt me the most. While the police questioned her at the station, the now widowed Chasey kept returning to the state of her marriage. I loved him. I, I really did love him. We've had a lot of issues in our marriage. It became eerily clear that although she claimed her husband was killed by a random assassin, Chasey herself had a motive for killing Bob. Chasey and Bob's marriage began with a passionate mutual infatuation, but after three years, their marriage began to crumble. They slept in separate bedrooms, and Chasey believed that Bob was still in love with his first wife. Chasey believed Bob was still in love with his first wife. His testosterone levels were low, and he was on medication to make up for it. There would just be times, you know, he would grab me by my hair, um, I could get thrown up against the wall. Bob's family and his first wife denied that he was capable of hurting anyone. His daughter, Natalie, lived with Bob and Chasey for six months when she was 16, and she said she never once saw him being violent during that time. Chasey denied it. I was the younger girl that came in and took their father. According to Chasey, she didn't tell anyone about Bob's treatment of her because she didn't want to jeopardize his job as captain of the fire department, which Bob gave an important role in the community. Instead, she began to seek legitimacy elsewhere. After a few years of marriage, Chasey lost 104 pounds and began going out more often. Around this time, Bob's teenage daughter, Natalie, discovered evidence on Chasey's computer that Chasey was seeing another man. Since Bob often worked the night shift at the fire station, Chasey had the opportunity to date men, leaving Natalie and her four-year-old half-sister at home. When Natalie finally told her father that he was cheating on her, he prepared divorce papers but did not file them. He wanted to avoid a second family breakup. Nevertheless, Bob began to suspect Chasey. He set up a surveillance camera at her front door and tried to catch her in the act, but he succeeded 12 days before the murder. One of Chasey's girlfriends rang the doorbell. Chasey rushed to the door and told her to leave immediately. But it was too late. Bob knew. For the police, two different pictures of Bob and Chasey Pointer's marriage had emerged. There was no doubt that their relationship was strained and on the verge of collapse. But which story was true? Was Bob an abusive and aloof husband? Or was Chasey having an affair? Either way, one thing was certain. No matter how much Chasey denied it, the end of their relationship was tied to Bob's mysterious murder. A week before Bob's death, they'd traveled to Mexico to reconcile. But when they returned, Bob told his co-workers of the tragic consequences. He reportedly said, I can't do this anymore. That was on Wednesday, September 7th. On Friday, September 9th, Bob was killed. Chasey said she was at a friend's house that night and then left to meet Bob at a restaurant. 
Whose house was that? Michael Garza. Are you and Michael Garza dating or anything like that? We, Do you have a relationship? Yes. She met Michael Garza on Facebook and they've been dating since that summer. Michael Garza, 37, was a truck driver. In 2000, he spent a year in jail for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. However, he had no previous convictions for violence. Nevertheless, police were alarmed if, as Chasey claimed, Bob was killed by a random stranger. Why did he let her go alive? Evidence contradicting her story suggested that she knew the killer. During questioning, the police pressed her. I think you're full of crap. I, I'm telling you, I don't know who pulled the trigger. See, I think you do, and that's the problem. No, I don't. Two hours later, Chasey's story finally collapsed. Who shot Robert? Can you say that louder for me, please? There's only one Mikey, Michael Garza, Chasey's boyfriend, killed her husband, almost got implicated in the crime, but Chasey changed her story. I didn't want to I just, I wanted to know it's like, be all the time. Chasey revealed that Garza had planned to threaten Bob to get him to leave her alone. She did not want Bob to get hurt, and she did not know that Garza had brought a shotgun with him. According to her, Garza planned to lure Bob out to a country road, and she had no way of knowing what he was up to. They drove there together, and she asked Bob to pick her up. And before she could stop him, Garza killed Bob. The police didn't believe the story, not least because Garza had no history of violence. But that wasn't all. Just a few months earlier, Chasey had talked Bob into making her the primary beneficiary of his $685,000 life insurance policy. On September 8th, the day before his death, he contacted his divorce attorney via Facebook and told her he was contemplating a surprise attack. The attack was that he would put his house up for sale and lose custody of his daughter. Chasey couldn't let that happen. She told her lovers about Bob's abuse and asked for their sympathy. Her boyfriend, Brad Golden, who was captured by surveillance cameras, was also questioned. 